Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And once again, as always, on behalf of Mark, Alice, and myself, we want to greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and tell you that we're blessed that you can join us for this time in God's Word. What a blessing it is to be able... I wish we could gather together, but that time is coming. Yes. Hallelujah. That time is coming. When we all get together. When we all... Get, well, that's okay. Yeah, well, I'm the choir singing a rousing chorus. Okay. We're continuing on in our study of Paul's first letter to Timothy. And we're in the fourth chapter. And I, I we left off last week in verse 14. 14 and 15, and I said I, would, I, I hadn't finished that, so I want to kind of recap and do that this, in this meeting, mm -hmm. and then carry on. And carry on we will right after Brother Mark asks for God's blessing on our time together. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for your presence here with us, yeah, and just open up our eyes and our hearts so that we can see and understand your, your word to spread it and encourage other people. Amen. And Amen. change us, O oh Lord. Yes. Change our hearts, O oh Lord. Change my heart, O oh God. Okay. First um, Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. That's where we're going to start, okay? Okay. Paul writes to Timothy, and he says, Do not neglect the spiritual gift within you, which was bestowed on you through the prophetic utterance with the laying on of the hands by the presbytery. The spiritual gift within you. Uh, I mentioned this last week. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, and in 1 Corinthians 12, I'm going to read verses 7 and 11. He said, But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually just as he wills. Mm -hmm. I hope you got that. It says, To each one is given the manifestation. And then he goes on and says, To each one. He's given it individually just as he wills. Every believer has been given a gift and a ministry by God. Every believer. It is not, you know, just the, the, the purview or the of the spiritual elite. We all are called to serve him. Mm -hmm. and, and serving him by serving one another. That's ministry. Amen. And he equips us for what he calls us to. That's the gifts. Okay? Mm -hmm. Every believer who has been saved by the blood of the Lamb, the word and the work of the cross, has a ministry and a gift. If you're not using yours, then you're not being faithful, and you are depriving the body of Christ of what the Lord has given you for the common good. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. Now, you need to understand what your purpose is. You know, there, there is a message that I've given many times talking about Paul's teaching from the letter to the Philippians, right? And the first thing of seven things that are so imperative and important in the life of a believer, the first one is purpose. God has a purpose in your life, mm -hmm. and that purpose is to work through you, work in you and through you, all right? If you're not sure what your ministry is, if you're not sure what your gift is, you need to get into on your face before God and find out what it is. Because God gave you that to benefit the body of Christ, not just yourself. And it will benefit you, all right? And then in verse 15, he says, Take pains with these things. Be absorbed in them so that your progress will be evident to all. These things that he's been talking about, right? And it's talking about the gifts and the ministries, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, take pains with these things. The King James says meditate upon these things. The English Standard Version says practice these things. Remember Paul's words just prior to this, speaking of bodily discipline and discipline for godliness, right? That's just before this in this letter to Timothy, about how we are to labor and strive for our faith. Meditate on your gifts Find them, like I said, find them if you haven't already done that, and joyfully use it or them to bless others. That's what Paul wrote in his letter to the Romans, to the church in Rome. Romans 12, 6 and 8, 12, chapter 12, verses 6 to 8 says this. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. 
if prophecy according to the proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. That's a lot of part of ministries, okay? That's yes. all part of the gifts of the Spirit, not yes. just what Paul outlines in, in 1 Corinthians 12. Mm -hmm. But remember, this is, what, is about what God has given you and what God has called you to, not what you feel like doing, mm -hmm. okay? All right? Because if you're based on your feelings, you're working with your flesh. Well, absolutely. And then you're, leaning, you're going to lean on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. And he says about these things, he says, be absorbed in them. That's all right. Mm -hmm. Now, the King James says, give yourself wholly to them. Give thyself wholly to them. But absorbed is a good word. I mean, that we are to be absorbed in these things of God. Mm -hmm. uh, not, that, not that you absorb them, but that you are absorbed in them. Right. Okay. Right. Your gift was not given to make you more visible in the church, but to make Christ more visible in the church. Right. Okay. Yeah, and that's, that's mm -hmm. really important. <laughs> God's gifting in your life. It's not about you, it's about him. To make him more visible than the life of Christ more visible in the church. It's not to puff you up, but to raise well, you up. You know, the thing that immediately comes to my mind is if you take a sponge and you put that sponge down and pour water on it, what happens? It disappears. The water is absorbed and you don't see the water anymore. Mm -hmm. All right? It's not like the sponge disappears and the water becomes visible. No, water if you're being absorbed in them, you're disappearing, and those Jesus. gifts are becoming visible. That ministry is becoming visible. Christ is becoming visible. Mm -hmm. All right? He must increase, but I must decrease. Those words of John the Baptist better ring true in our hearts, all right? For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God, is what Paul wrote to the Colossians in Colossians 3.3. 3. Our life is supposed to be hidden in him. We're supposed to be in Christ. Christ is in us, but you know what? We want him to be visible because our ministry, all of us, is to bring the knowledge of the presence of Christ Jesus into every place. The living water that Jesus spoke to the woman about, you know, to the woman at the well. Mm -hmm. That's John chapter four. We want to go read it, right? That's so important because that that is to put... It won't put that, that kind of water won't put the spirit, the holy, the fire of the Holy Spirit out. Okay, it'll build that fire up. Now that may be contrary to the ways of the world, but there's a shocker mm -hmm. that pouring pouring that water, the living water, on the fire of the Holy Spirit will make it rage. Oops, that won't put it out. Okay, His ways are still not our ways. <clears throat> but that said, Paul would still have to write to Timothy in his next letter, Second Timothy. And he would say, for this reason, I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Remember, for the yes. that's yes. the prophetic word. No, the prophetic word. This is God speaking through somebody as they laid hands on to kindle afresh. Kindle is that's what you do with a fire. A kindle sticks. afresh. Well, if it's starting to die out, if there's embers or you just have to kindle it again. Right. Stir it up. Stir it up. I, I did you go through any firefighting training in the, in the military? Not much. No, no. Maybe I, I did. Maybe <clears throat> because uh, I think everybody in the Navy, to some degree, is trained in firefighting. Mm -hmm. Because if you're on a ship, or like I was on a, a ship, or and on an airplane, you know, I flew as an air crewman. And if a fire breaks out, you cannot dial nine one one. Or 999 for my British friends. No, no, no. There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to run. It's up to you to get that fire out. So I had a, a fairly good amount of firefighting training, right? Putting a fire out is the opposite of what we want to do here. Paul is saying we want to kindle it afresh. We want that fire to flame up, all right? But the, I know that the way you put a fire out, there's three ways you put a fire out. And this is this is an absolute universal truth. Mm -hmm. You take away the heat. Right. That's why they spray water. Firefighters spray water. Around. They're trying to cool it off, take right. away the heat. You take away the fuel. If it doesn't have anything to burn, it dies out. Or you take away the oxygen. Now, that was like important with airplanes and electronics. 
because you don't you don't put water on the electronics. So you, you put foam on it. You take away so it can't breathe. The fire can't breathe. Or CO2. Oh, well, yeah, but either way, right. What you're doing is you're removing the oxygen to starve the fire of oxygen, and it'll die, right? So to make sure that the fire does not go out, because that's what we want here. We want to rekindle it. We want to build it up. To make it grow and burn brighter, you do the opposite. Mm -hmm. You add fuel. Mm -hmm. You don't take the fuel away, you add fuel. That's why Paul wrote in Romans 12, 10, and 11, he said, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor, not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Fervent in spirit. Peter said the same thing. Peter said, above all, keep fervent in your love for one another. Got to add some heat here. Got to add some heat to this fire. I, uh, I mean, uh, you got to add fuel to it. If it's, if you ever had a fireplace, you know, when your, your fireplace, the fire starts to burn down, what do you do? You add fuel to it, right? Mm -hmm. And again, going back to Romans 12, Paul said, Romans 12, 1, he said, therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God. Oh, oh. Put ourselves on the altar. <laughs> Ah, which is your spiritual service of worship, Romans 12. Yeah. Put the fuel on, you are the fuel. That's right. Put yourself, you're the fuel, okay? Offer yourself without reservation, okay? God will use that to lift that fire up. Be diligent in the word, studying to show yourself approved, as Paul wrote to Timothy later. Mm -hmm. Fill yourself with the fuel of God's word and you will burn brighter and better, okay? Truly being the light of the world. Let that fire roar in you, okay? Add oxygen to the fire. If taking the oxygen away, we'll put it out. You ever see a fire, you blow on it. Oh, that's right. I mean, when fire, fire, you hear about these horrific fires in, in, in the western part of the United States, these fires that just go and burn horrendously. The, things that, the thing that makes it so difficult for firefighters is winds coming off the ocean. Mm -hmm. That wind hits those fires, and boy, it just flares, flares up. up, right? Mm -hmm. Well, add oxygen. When the day of Pentecost had come, it says in Acts chapter 2, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues of fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving utterance. See, that mighty rushing wind brought the fire of the Holy Spirit now, like the prophet Elijah, you don't know about prophet Elijah in, in mm -hmm. First Kings, all right? Oh, Carl. He, he was a man, he said, he was filled with a jealous zeal for God, mm -hmm. this passion, this fire, fire of the heart, right? He was filled with a jealous zeal for God. When he was on Mount Carmel, our Lord sent down fire from above, a consuming fire. Now, if you don't know that account, go read it, because I'll tell you what. There was That's an altar, exciting. there was no ring. that it burned everything, man. It just consumed everything. It consumed the offering, it consumed the altar, it consumed the dust around it, and it consumed the water that they had poured on it. We need to get closer and closer to the Lord. For our God is a consuming fire, is what it says in Hebrews 12, 29. Want to catch fire? Go stand in the fire, go stand next to the fire. Okay. Now, let's move on to 1 Timothy 4.16. Pay close attention to yourself and to the teaching. Persevere in these things, for as you do this, you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who hear you. Take heed. The King James says, take heed, all right? Paying close attention. Don't be casual about your relationship with the Lord. Don't be casual. This is serious stuff. This is life and death. This is everything that matters in your life for all eternity is your relationship with the Lord. Don't be casual about it. Get that zeal. Get close, all right? Pay close attention to it. 
Examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Test yourselves. Or do you not recognize about this about yourself that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail to test? 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourselves. All right? Take heed. Take care. Pay attention to what's going on in your life spiritually. You know, it's not a matter of visiting God once a week in some church building. It's a matter of walking hand in hand with him. That's what he desires, according to the prophet Micah. Mm -hmm. Right? We, we need to, and you, whatever you want to grow, we were called to cultivate, you nurture. We need to nurture that relationship with the Lord. Okay? So you've got, you've got to do that, and you've got to pay attention to the teaching. One says to your teaching. Yeah, well, that's... Uh, is, that, is that indicating that, that Timothy is going to be a teacher? Well, no, it's teacher. indicating that that word your is not actually there in the Greek. Oh, it isn't. Oh, okay. okay. Let me tell you something. You should pay attention to all teaching that you believe is from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Certainly, if you are being used of God, and that's your ministry, to, to share the word, to teach the word, you better be paying attention to what you're doing. Because from whom much is given, much is required. And you are responsible for what God has entrusted you with. I mean, I take that seriously, all right? But by the same token, if, regardless of where the teaching comes from, if it originates with God, you had better take heed. You had better pay attention, right? And you better test it to the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because they have no dawn. That's what God spoke 2,700 years ago through the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 820, right? You got to test, you got to examine yourself, but you got to test every word that comes out. I mean, every teaching that you hear, you better test it according to the word. And you have to remember, of course, that when one of the scribes, remember this, when one of the scribes came to Jesus and heard him arguing with the Pharisees, right? And recognizing that he had answered them well, he asked him, Jesus, what commandment is the foremost of all? And Jesus answered, the foremost is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Mark chapter 12, 28 through 31. Test every teaching against that. Test everything that you hear against that. Is it drawing us closer to have more and more of our lives, our hearts dedicated to the Lord, right? And by extension, you can't love the Lord without loving your neighbor. That's what he said. I mean, I pray that you know what he said when he talked about somebody comes to him and says, you know, and on the day of judgment, he says, well, you fed me when I was hungry. You visited me when I was in prison. You, you clothed me when I was naked. And somebody says, when did we do these things? He said, what you've done to the least of my brethren, you've done to me. So that love that you have, this foremost command for God, had better be extending to, to others, to his, all right? So just by the way, when it comes to the teaching, I, I want to suggest, I want to strongly suggest, I want to very strongly suggest that if you have not lately read the Sermon on the Mount, mm -hmm. I'm talking about Matthew 5, 6, and 7. If you haven't read them lately, and I mean read through the entire thing, not just a verse here and a verse here. I mean sit down and read line, the, by line. line by line those three chapters. If you haven't done that recently, then doing so would be a very good way, a great way of paying attention to the teaching as long as you hear it and obey it. Right? And he says, persevere in these things. Unfortunately, all too many will not persevere. That's a fact. Not a pleasant fact, but it's the truth. Because Jesus said through the, through the Apostle Paul to Timothy in his next letter, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, for the time will come, and he's talking about the perilous last days, for the time will come when they will, and they being the church, will not endure sound doctrine. But wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance with their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth 
and turn aside to myths. This is one of the great dangers in the body of Christ today. You know, Jesus said, but the one who endures to the end, he will be saved, Matthew 24, 13. And Matthew 24 is when the apostles came to him and said, you know, tell us what will be the signs of your coming in the end of the age. So he said, that's one of the signs of the end of the age. You have to endure and the ones who endure will be saved. But in the same passage there in Matthew 24, he also said that many would fall away. Mm -hmm. Verse 10, many false prophets will arise. Verse 11, false Christs and prophets will show great signs and wonders so as to lead, if possible, even the elect astray. Verse 24, so as you do this, you will endure, you will ensure salvation. That's what it says in this verse, right? Now, as I, I just quoted from Matthew 24, the Lord's teaching on the last days, he noted that many would fall away. But that said, for those who hear, as it says at the end of that verse, faith will arise and will, we will endure and overcome. The people that hear what's said, right? Not everybody hears, right? For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. 1 John 5, 4. Because you'll know those who hear the word because they'll be doers of the word. Absolutely. Because if you hear the word and don't do it, you're just ineffectual and it's a, it's a waste. You're disobeying God. Right. And, and because Peter wrote the same thing. Peter said, you therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard. Be on your guard mm -hmm. so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness. Second Peter 3.17. You've got to take care mm -hmm. of these things. You've got to be on guard. You have to be on watch. You have to endure to the end. Peter also said, be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Yes. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. First Peter 5, 8. He's out there looking. These are days, I'll tell you what, you need to be on guard. Mm -hmm. You need to be paying attention. That's what Paul is saying, right? Because he's more crafty and subtle than any other creature. And pray <clears throat> that people hear you. Pray that they hear this word of God. Mm -hmm. Okay? And because the prophet Amos, he foresaw a time, and appears that appears to be now, in my, I'm not going to say my opinion. No. My observation is that we see this happening. Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine for bread or thirst for water, but rather for hearing the words of the Lord. Amos 8.11. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like people are not hearing God's word. It's, it's out there in abundance, they're but they're it. turning it off. Whew. Jeremiah, this is not new, not new. Jeremiah chapter 5, 21 said, Now hear this, O foolish and senseless people who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. You got to pray. Dig out my ears, O Lord. You got to pray. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. You got to pray that you don't miss anything that God is doing, anything that God has done for you in your life anything that God is doing for you in your life and the things that God is going to do for you. Because I promise you, God is going to do things for you. Amen. He has done wonderful and marvelous things. He has done the greatest things that he could do. If you don't believe me, meditate on the word of the cross. But there is yet to come that day. Hallelujah. That great and terrible day of the Lord. Mm, that's the wrath of God. Well, that's what we've been saved from. Yeah. We've been saved from the wrath of God. But God is going to come. I mean, I'll tell you what. There's going to come a time, and I don't believe it's terribly far off. You're going to hear hoofbeats in the sky. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's not a matter of missiles flying around or planes flying around. You're going to hear hoofbeats in the sky. And there will be a rider on a white horse, and his name is Faithful and True. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Flames of fire shooting out of his eyes. You better be prepared. Fire. Because you don't know when it's coming, but it could come in it. It's, Hallelujah. Write this down. Even so, Amen. come Lord Jesus. Amen. Okay. So let's let's move along to chapter 5, right? From chapter 5, the first two verses I want to read. Do not re sharply rebuke an older man, but rather appeal to him as a father, to the younger men as brothers, 
the older women as mothers and the younger women as sisters in all purity. Do not rebuke an older man. You know, Paul spoke to the Ephesians, wrote to the Ephesians. He said, we're supposed to speak the truth in love. Okay, we need to speak the truth. We need to not be concerned about speaking the truth. Because the truth, Jesus Christ is the truth. And the truth will make you free. Will make you free. In Timothy, 1 Timothy 3.16, where is it? It says the word of God is is for four things. It's that second Timothy. Yeah, second Timothy three sixteen. Three sixteen. Yes, it's it's, it's first of all, it's God breathed. Right. Okay. Now we talked about fire. Yes. This is the breath of God. I mean, this it's is the wind the, by God. Theonustos. It's, it's but it's not more. It's more inspired. It's breathed. Breathed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, it, it talks about it, how it's profitable for. Doctrine, teaching, teaching, doctrine, reproof, training, correct reproof. Yes, for, correction, for, training, and for training and righteousness. Okay, you've been given right. Righteousness is the, the gift of God. I mean, salvation is the free gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But salvation is righteousness. Mm -hmm. We have been made right with God the Father through the atoning work of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are righteous, but you want to know something? Now you got to be trained in righteousness. Right. You have been saved, you've been redeemed, you've been brought out of death and called forth into light, into life. But like Lazarus who came out wrapped in the clothing of death, in the garments of death, God's, you know, we have to take that off now. We have to, we have to put aside, we're That's new true. creations in Christ, but we have to put aside the old things. The traditions. We got the, the traditions, darkness. the yeah. habits, the old ways of thinking, and we have to be transformed That's by the true. renewing of our minds. Right. And how do you do that? You're transformed by the word of God. Amen. God is the potter and we are the clay. He molds us. He shapes us. He is making us into something very good. Mm. He's, mo he's molding us and making us into the only thing that's very good. Whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed into the image of his son, Christ Jesus. Amen. That's what he's doing. He's shaping us and making us more and more like his son, Christ Jesus, who is the word, the word made flesh who dwelt among us. So we need to receive that word. We need to be diligent with that word. We need to just abide in that word so God can train us in the righteousness that he has given us. Because sin has deformed us. And that's why we have to be born again. That's exactly why. <laughs> I, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not funny. It's just a thing. I've gotten a lot of um, blowback on this. People say, well, you know, we're all made in the image of God. Mm. And that's not true. No. Not all mankind is made in the image of God. Man, Adam, was made in the image of God. Yes. Absolutely without, without fail. But he was deformed by sin. Mm -hmm. And he gave birth after his own kind. And after, after, Adam, after the fall, man came forth in the image of Adam, not in the image of God. Which is why Jesus said, you must be born mm -hmm. again. So that now... You're born by the Father above, and you come forth in the image of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a wonderful thing. Amen. I mean, you're cute. You're cute. Tell me I'm cute. Go ahead. But we're all going to look like Jesus, because it says when we see him as he is, we will be as he is. And Father, we are so looking forward to that time, Lord, that we will be just like your son, Christ Jesus, that all the rest will be chipped away from our Amen. lives. And all that will be left is Christ Jesus. We praise you and thank you for the work of your spirit in our lives. We thank you for the work, your love, that's molding us and shaping us. And we pray, Lord God, that we would be faithful witnesses to your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, until next time, may the Lord our God bless you, use you for his glory, bless you to bits. Till next time, bye-bye. Of your mighty